In this video, I'll show how Mixcraft's auto warp function lets you quickly lock an entire song to the grid. If you're trying to lock a somewhat modern song to grid, this usually isn't too difficult because most modern music was likely created with a computer and quantized to grid when it was created. But if it's an older track, the instruments were likely played live to one degree or another, recorded to an analog multitrack tape machine, and then mixed down to another analog tape machine. This means the track's tempo will drift as it plays. In other words, the tempo will constantly be changing. In fact, if you were to analyze the amount of tempo drift in many classic songs, you might be amazed at the degree of tempo variation. The good news is that Mixcraft's advanced auto warp function can usually straighten out tempo drift and lock a song to grid in a few seconds. Once the song is locked to grid, it's very easy to add your own parts, create mashups with other songs, and do all kinds of other fun stuff. For this video, I've chosen the Donna Summer Georgia Marauder classic, I Feel Love. Because it's an older track, it definitely has a fair amount of tempo drift, but as you'll see, Mixcraft's auto warp function will easily let you line it up to the grid. I'm going to begin by dragging in the song from Windows Explorer. Now the first thing I want to do is play it for you so you can hear what the song sounds like with the metronome on. You can see the project tempo is set to 150 beats per minute. And if I play the song back against it, obviously the tempo is a lot faster than the song is playing. So let's double click on the song. Now you can see the song has a really long intro here where it fades up. And this can possibly confuse auto warp, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the start point of the song. So I'm going to put the carrot near the beginning. And I want the start point to be where the beat comes in. So first I'm going to hit warp, and we can see all the warp lines. And then I'm going to put the carrot right at the beginning. This is where I want my start point to be. And then I'll right click and choose set a start time. And if you look up here, you can see this little red arrow up here, and this indicates our start time. So now that we've got our start time set, I'm going to hit Auto Warp. Auto Warp has a couple of different settings, from tight to sloppy. Now if our song has pretty clearly defined rhythmic content, like this one does, then I can use tight. And this is going to put in a lot of warp markers. If I zoom out, you can see them all. And if the song is a little looser, you'll want to use something like loose or sloppy. Because using tight on a song like that can end up putting in too many warp markers, and things can get confused, and it'll stretch where you don't necessarily want it to. So this might take a little experimenting, but it's really easy to try different settings by just clicking and selecting them. So I'm going to leave this on tight. And now when I play back, we can hear our song is trucking along at 150 beats per minute. So let's put this back to about 130, which is much closer to the native tempo. And let's turn on our click. You can hear we're right with the click. Now the really nifty part here is I can change tempo. I can go back to my blazing 150 beats a minute. And we're right in time. Or I can go down to something crazy slow, like 50. Now I might not recommend doing that because it can get kind of distorted and goofy sounding, but this can actually make for some pretty interesting sonic noise, and it will be in time. Auto warping sometimes takes a little experimentation to get it just right, but most of the time it works amazingly well and is a great creative tool.